Welcome to Nevada and Tobago to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Let's take a look at the headlines. Diwali celebrations get underway on the weekend at the Diwali Nagar site in Central. The Honorable Prime Minister says her government intends to serve the full five-year term in office. And the Food Production Minister says the time has come for citizens to start cherishing local and original food crops. Thank you for joining us. Let not your heart be troubled. This was the reassurance given by Prime Minister the Honorable Kamala Pasad Basasa as she says her government would not give in to intimidation and they would serve the full five-year term in office. The Prime Minister spoke at the 15th annual Diwali celebration hosted by the Saparia Women's Group in Pinao. Prime Minister Kamala Pasad Bisesa making an offering during Lakshmi Puja at her annual Diwali celebrations at a Saparia constituency office on the SS Arian Road, Pinal. Speaking at the Diwali celebrations at a constituency office in Saparia, Mrs. Basad Bisesa also sought to reassure her audience, which comprised mainly of her constituents from the Pinal Saparia constituency, that the government had passed the rough waters. And so I say to you here in my own constituency, as I thank you for the love and support you've given to us through all the 25 years I have been in politics, that I will be with you here today, tonight, and tomorrow. Thank you very much. May Mother Lakshmi shower her choicest blessings on each and every one of you. May you continue to grow from strength to strength. And know this always. You gave us a mandate for five years, and we of the government will make sure to honor that mandate for the full five years. Mrs. Pasad Bisesa says she will do what is right when the time is right, and when issues come before her government, they will put God in front and walk behind. And so always be guided by thy divine light, as tonight we celebrate the divine light. In every religion, light is a symbolism, a symbol of the divine might. And so we will always put God in front. We will continue to walk behind, but we can only do it with your love and your support. That love and support you've shown us through the last two and a half years and even before. The Prime Minister says she would deal with the issues that face her and her government. When wrong comes to light, I will deal with it. And when right comes to light, I will praise it. So to my members of my government here tonight, I praise each and every one of them who have come here and those who had other engagements, give them a good Saparia Pinal round of applause. The Prime Minister adds that her government has gone through some rough pathways and waters. She says despite these challenges, the ship has sailed and her government couldn't have done it without the support of the people, whom she describes as the wind beneath their wings. Several government ministers attended the Diwali celebration, including A.G. Ram Logan, Minister in the Ministry of Local Government, Rudranath Indarsing, Energy Minister Kevin Ramnarine, Education Minister Dr. Tim Gopisingh, and the People and Social Development Minister Dr. Glenn Ramadasing. Joseph Lopez, News 4. Diwali celebrations got underway over the weekend. The Diwali Nagar site in central Trinidad continued with tradition and was the site for the opening ceremony of the Hindu festival. Hindus gathered in their thousands over the weekend for the opening of the Diwali Nagar, commonly translated to mean Village of Festival of Lights. The opening, hosted by the National Council of Indian Culture, NCIC, featured stage performances by East Indian cultural practitioners, skits and plays, and displays by various Hindu religious sects and social organizations. This year, the NCIC marks the 26th anniversary of Diwali Nagar. 
President of the NCIC, Dr. Diokinan Sharma, is reported as saying the Nagar this year is based on the team Ram Bhakta Hanuman, or faithful devotee of Rama Hanuman. As such, the council is expected to put on an exhibition of the life and times of Lord Hanuman done by India's Baba Satyanarayan Moray. This year, the council has also invited a special guest of honor, Swami Prakashanda Maharaj, who was awarded the Shakunya Gold Medal for long and meritorious service to Trinidad and Tobago in the sphere of religion. The Diwali Naga for the next seven nights will feature nightly worship of the goddess Lakshmi, lighting of deers, performances by various schools related to Indian culture, and a food court with Indian and non-Indian vegetarian delicacies. The Naga will be filled with booths featuring goods and services relating to Indian culture. The festival culminates with magnificent fireworks displays ushering in Diwali. The Naga started on Sunday and runs for eight days ending on November 12th, the day before Diwali. Gregory McBurney, News 4. News 4 continues after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Food Production Minister the Honorable Devant Maharaj says the time has come for citizens to start cherishing local and original food crops, especially the ones that are being cloned in other parts of the world. He underscored that this kind of neglect for own genius here in Trinidad and Tobago must come to an end. Minister Maharaj is throwing his support behind an initiative which oversees the distribution of breeding stock to farmers. The minister says the additional support which has been provided to the farmers over the past year in particular is a direct result of his vision for his ministry and this country. He reiterates that Trinidad and Tobago's food import bill needs to be lowered and as such he believes an increase in local production is the best way to do so. He maintains that there are many financial benefits to be gained if the food import bill is lowered. The pattern of supply is such that for each pound of locally produced lamb or goat consumed, 10 pounds are imported. This is an important statistic signal signaling that government ought to provide, in fact they should as a matter of food security, an en enabling environment which results in increased local production to the extent that it eventually displaces the imported product. It is our goal, it is our intention that in the area of sheep and goat that we have less reliance on the import. This would definitely result in a reduction of the food import bill, impact significantly on our food security, as well as create sustainable employment and income opportunities throughout the value chain. He says a greater emphasis on local production and farming can see many stakeholders in the industry and even the wider country as a whole benefit. This, he explains, will lead to the production of more meat and milk for sale and for local consumption. He reveals that this, though, is simply one of the key strategies this government plans to implement to encourage growth in the industry. One of the key strategic actions is to increase the supply of stock to the national herd and flock to disseminate genetic material to the farming community. This is just one of several initiatives that will encourage producers to expand their enterprises and thus stimulate production of more goat milk, lamb and goat meat. Minister Maharaj warns, however, that growth and development of this industry and increased productivity will not take place unless there is continuous training, sharing of information and technical cooperation between the Ministry of Food Production, Land and Marine Affairs and regional as well as international agencies that have supported and continue to support the sector in Trinidad and Tobago. Gregory McBurney, News 4. The Minister of the People and Social Development, Dr. The Honorable Glenn Ramadasing, is congratulating students who successfully completed a videography training program conducted by the Poverty Reduction Program. The students were told that this achievement should also serve as a reminder that they have improved themselves by adding skills and experience to their knowledge base. A picture paints a thousand words, and what a better way to highlight the good work that is being done by the Social Justice Foundation. Through the videography program, says Minister of the People and Social Development, Dr. Glenn Ramadasing, as he sought to congratulate the students for attaining this great achievement. Proving yet again that the youth of our nation 
if given the opportunity to defeat the pall of poverty, poverty will not just rise to the occasion, but produce marvelous works of art in the process. The very first president of the United States, George Washington wrote, a primary object should be the education of our youth in the science of government. In a republic, what species of knowledge can be equally important? And what duty more pressing than communicating it to those who are to be the future guardians of the liberties of our country? The minister says the People's Partnership does not only believe in educating future leaders about the science of government, but is ensuring that they receive the tools and skills to effectively communicate in language. I saw it in the production of this ad where you are using the language you understand, the things you see, the things you look to for entertainment, and using the entertainment function to create a knowledge base. And so the language that you are using today is media arts. When I looked at your excited faces, your smiling faces, I know that you are enjoying the creative process and enjoying looking at the reward and the successes of your work. The program prepares the students for opportunities, jobs and careers in the area of technology. The focus is placed on video production and can help build values and to focus on human development. We are pleased today that the areas targeted are Siparia and Mayaro because we have always said that there have always been a Port of Spain centric mode of development in Trinidad and Tobago. And if we do that, go out to the rural communities and create a better quality human resource, if we do not have the skills and training and the roads and the transportation, what we will have is unequal development of the country. News 4 understands that approximately 40 graduates receive certification. Some of them even took the opportunity to sum up best what they love most about the program. I enjoy the interactive sessions with my class members so much. I look forward to Saturdays so I could go meet with the group and see what new material we would learn. We learn a lot about the camera and how all the parts worked. The project was initially conducted by the PRP in Carson Field between August 2011 and March 2012 and included 21 students who graduated on October 19, 2012. Through collaboration with BPTT, the model was extended to Saparia and Mayaro regions. Forty youth participants from both areas were exposed to modern technology and increased opportunities for skill development and employment. The training took place every other Saturday over a period of nine months. Participants from Saparia produced a film which were entered and chosen in the TNT Film Festival 2012. Joseph Lopez, News 4. News 4 continues after the break. run of the TT Pro League debutants Central FC ended on Saturday when they fell to St. Anne's Rangers as league action continued at the Otto Bolden Stadium in Coover. Central had two wins from as many matches and led the points table going into match day four, but Dean Pacheco's men brought them back down to earth. Wayne Cunningham has the highlights from that encounter as well as the match between Caledonia AIA and TNT. At the start of match day four in the TT Pro League, Central FC were at the top of the standings with a perfect record from their two matches played. By the second half of their match with the St. Anne's Rangers, they were 2 0 down, courtesy of this man, Devon Morris, and strike partner, Jason Meccano. In the 72nd minute, Morris then put what looked like icing on the cake after some fine work on the flank by Meccano.
3 nil in the 72nd minute would make any team comfortable. But Rangers got a bit too lax and were punished by a bullet from Hayden Tinto two minutes later. Central thought they were still in with a chance of sharing the points after that and went into full attack. Their persistence paid off in the 90th minute. Once again, it was Tinto doing the damage following a defense splitting pass by Simba Aberdeen which started it all. Graham Ricks' men would run out of time though and fell to their first loss in the Pro League going down 3-2 to St. Dan's Rangers and also losing their place at the top of the points table. That place was taken by Caledonia AIA of Mova Lavantil, who hosted a goal scoring clinic in game two at the Atabolan Stadium versus TN Tech. Conrad Smith got the ball rolling for AIA in the 25th minute after some slick passing in midfield. Three minutes before the halftime, it was 2-0. Atula Guerra getting on the score sheet with some expert placement. As the second half began, Maloney sensation Nathan Lewis tried to resume the scoring for Caledonia, but needed some direction on this effort. Nathan would get a chance to celebrate after another flowing move by Cali, which ended in Guerra scoring his second of the match. Nathan was busy on the right flank, this time serving his Maloney neighbor, but Keon Edwards muffed the chance. The man they call Bobo would make up for that miss in the best possible fashion as he scores his team's fourth. Goal number five was a hat trick for Guerra as Caledonia scored at will. To round out the scoring, AIA was awarded a penalty in the 85th minute and Kareem Joseph stepped up and converted with accustomed ease. Caledonia AIA thumping TN Tech 6-0 to move to the top of the standings on goal difference. Wayne Cunningham, News 4 Sports. News 4 continues after the break. Stay with us. This year, Credi, the Catholic Institute, hosted its graduation ceremony 2012 and is being hailed an historic event. The University of Credi confirms Master of Science degrees in education of 14 students who are registered with the Catholic Religious Education Development Institute, more familiarly known as Credi. This year, Credi is again hosting the graduation of 11 master programs, tutored by the University of the Catholic Institute. However, they say it's a special occasion, because in addition for the first time in Credi's 40th history, the graduating class comprises of 197 students.
Dr. Vina Jules, president of the Institute, says the work at times was seemingly difficult to bear, but together they persevered to a successful end. You have earned your international Dr. Jewell urges the students to keep in mind that their business is about building persons in society and being positive role models. In my church, we don't build, we build buildings, but you build people. At Freddy, I have learned to build people. She adds that their mission is to be student ambassadors for Trinidad and Tobago and to give others in the future opportunities to live the dream they have experienced at Crady. Your struggles have been Crady's birthing struggles. And again, we are all the better for it. We are now stronger people. We are not still stuff. Go forth and teach according to the young people best. After the graduates received their certificates, they were treated to some musical performances from the little ones who showed off their skills on the national instrument. Joseph Lopez, News 4. Well, that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barreto. Thank you for joining us.